Welcome back to part two. We're looking at um, the Quranic manuscripts and the biblical manuscripts. And this whole series is called The Word of God. What is the Word of God? Who is the Word of God? Now, we ended the last um, session on a really interesting um, topic. And I have the two fellows right now goofing off behind the camera and <laughs> <laughs> trying to distract me. <laughs> And so um, let me just introduce this, please. We're looking um, at the Word of God. And in this particular uh, program, we're going to be looking at the Quran. So we're really going to be unpacking the Quran. And Jay's going to be introducing some really interesting latest research on the Quran. Um, Jay, we're going to be looking, aren't we, at the six earliest manuscripts of the Quran, which Muslims, of course, believe are, are the same or very similar. Um, many of my Muslim friends believe the Quran has never been changed. Um, anyone who's talked to a Muslim will have heard a Muslim friend say the Quran mm. has never been changed. Yeah. Well, we're going to look at those early six Qurans. So in the last episode, we ended with this. We talked, and the claim they make is, our Bible has been corrupted, it's been changed, it's been accreted, it's been deleted, uh, therefore we cannot trust it. And we said in the last episode that that whole argument was in, invented, was created. The first time it was, ever, it was ever spoken was in 1056, the 11th century. That's 400 years after supposedly this book was written, they finally came up with that argument. And uh, we, we, one of the best ways to respond to that argument is, can you show me in the Quran where it says so? One, one, one verse. Mm -hmm. And I've said this for 37 years, show me one verse that says that previous scriptures have been corrupted. It doesn't. 1090, uh, 94, chapter 10, verse 94, chapter 21, verse 7 says, go to those scriptures if you have any questions. Chapter 4, 136 says, this, the, God has given us both you, both these books. Uh, chapter 29, verse 46, don't even argue with the Christian. Oh, that's a good one at Speaker's Corner. Yeah. <laughs> don't even argue with us because God has given the scriptures for you and for us. And then chapter 5, verse 46 and 47, verse 68 tells Christians to come back to this book. The only one they can ever come up with is chapter 2, verse 79. That's the best that they'll come up with. And it refers to the scriptures, be careful of those Jews who write with their own hands, call it the book. Ah. That seems to suggest yeah. that something's gone wrong with the Jews, that the Jews are writing with their own hands and call it the book. Mm -hmm. Read the verse before it. It says, beware of those Jews who know not the book. Ah. That means they don't know scripture. Yeah. Right. They but yeah. guess. And then verse 79, be, care, be careful of those Jews who write with their own hand and call it the book. This has nothing to do with the book. The actual it's book, yeah. something that they guess. They don't know the book. These are the apocryphal writings. Well, also they point to a verse in Jeremiah, don't they? I think it's in chapter 8 of Jeremiah in the Bible. Many Muslim missionaries have pointed out um, to me before, and I'm sure you've had this mm -hmm. argument, where it talks about the lying um, pens of the scribes. Yeah. See, the Bible's been changed. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the changing of the Bible. Mm -hmm. There would be scribes that would be lying, but that's not talking about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah the prophet is warning them against them, mm. such people as well and drawing them back as do all the prophets, mm. drawing the people back to the true word, both the written word, but especially the living word that Jeremiah and all those prophets knew personally, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what's really even one step further, take it one step further, let's go back to chapter 2, verse 79 which, and verse 78, which says, be careful, don't even trust those Jews who write with their own hands and call it the book. Don't even have anything to do with them. Take a look at the Quran and you will see chapter 5, verse 31 and 32 are the apocryphal writings. These are the apocryphal writings of the Jews. The story of Cain and Abel is an apocryphal text from Jonathan ben Uzziah, written in the second century. Chapter, uh, let me give you another one, chapter 27, uh, verse 17 to 44 is the story of, of uh, uh, Solomon and Sheba oh, and the yeah, hoople that bird, yeah. that's another apocryphal fable. Yeah. Chapter 21, verse 51 to 71 is the story of Abraham in the, te in the Kaaba. What's he doing in the Kaaba and what yeah. is Abraham doing in Mecca that even exists at that time? <laughs> yeah. Nonetheless, this is in a second century apocryphal account. Yeah. So it's fascinating that the very thing that chapter 2 verse 79 is warning them about is the it's Quran itself. The Quran, yeah. It's saying don't trust the Quran. Yeah. It's a self indictment. But let's get back. This idea of corruption, if it is, was introduced, then they, you need to ask, well, then, let's see what the Muslims next say. They say they can go back to the original text. Have you heard them say that? Oh, all the time, yes. yeah. 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 I mean, you've had that. Absolutely. This, we are the only ones that have a text that can go back to the original, yeah. and that text are those manuscripts. So now, they say I they have the manuscripts. Now, I wonder if Muslims would understand that the text from the time of Muhammad isn't advanced enough in the Arabic to accommodate the Quran they use today. Well, we brought that up in the last yeah. episode. I, and we're going to get into that yeah. because that's the problem with the Qira'at and the Ahruf and the di diacritical marks. We'll but have to explain what that we'll all get into means that. later that's on. Not, for, not right now. But let's add this whole notion that there was an original text yeah. that was written down first at the time of Abu Bakr. Then 20 years, roughly 10, 20 years later, at the time of Uthman, it had to be rewritten again. Where do we get this from? From the Muslims' own traditions. Al-Buhari. 
which is uh, he's the what the earliest of the mm -hmm. the compa traditions, compilations of traditions. the hadith, yeah. the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. He's writing this in the late ninth century, around 870. Mm. That's what, way after anyway. When Muhammad dies, 632. Yeah. yeah. Do your maths. How many years? I mean, uh, yeah. Say 240 200, years. Yeah, like, yeah. So 240 years later, he's saying. Actually, this book was written at the time of Abu Bakr, two years after Muhammad's death, they write it the first time. Then they have to write it again a second time. The same guy, Zaid ibn Thabit, who is the secretary of Muhammad, ha is given these, this, this text that was sh shoved under the bed of Hamza and left there for 20 years. Why was that there? Why stick it under the bed for 20 years? Isn't this supposed to yeah. be this sacred thing straight down? You would that? think, right? Yeah. I would kind of look after that and make sure lots of copies were made. And lots of copies yeah. were made. Why was not one copy made? It just doesn't make sense to me. See, can and why were there competing copies from different people? Ah, That's very interesting. So, this so is early what on. happens. At the yeah. time of Uthman, 20 years what? later, these, these companions come to Uthman and say, what are we going to do? There are now many copies made that don't agree. We don't, be, won't, don't, we don't want to be like the Christians who have many, many different copies. We want to have just one copy. What is that talking about? Well, if you ask any Muslim that, they'll say, ah, these are the different readings. These are the different, mm -hmm. what the word is kira'at in, in Arabic, or ahruf. But if you ask any Muslim what kira'at means and ahruf mean, as many Muslims as you talk to, they will give you as many different revelations. Before we get to that, I don't want to get to that yet. But can you see, that's the reason why Uthman then said, ah, so we have to write one final text. What do they mean by read? I don't understand, like, different readings. That just is different versions. Hold on I don't to that. understand. We're going to get to that. I'm not going to answer that question yet. Because, <laughs> because, because how can you that have versions is one of, so early on? We're going to see yeah, How that, can this be even going on? I thought the only copy was under someone's bed. Okay. And then they pull it out 20 years there you go. but there are already loads so why don't they just take that one yeah what well, that's the one so why don't they just take out and redo it yeah why not okay they is there did. an answer to that they will say they did it this is what he did he had Hafsa's copy rebought back out of the, from under the bed given to Zaidi bin Thabit and then he says to Zaidi bin Thabit write it in the Qureshi dialect now, for those of you who don't speak Arabic, and most of you probably don't speak Arabic, any, but those who do speak Arabic, what is a dialect dif dialectical difference in Arabic? In Arabic, everything is written in a consonantal text. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go and put on the screen. I want to just you a look on the screen here. Look at this script that I have. Now, this is what we call the razm. That is what the earliest Quran looked like. So we're talking mm. about if there was anything in the 7th century at the time of Uthman, it would have looked like that. This is what we call the Arabic skeletal script. This so is constant. no vowel marks, See, there's no dots nothing. There. Yeah, there's nothing. Like it's like with Hebrew, yeah. and you have no vowel there, things. There's no yeah. vowels. Nothing. And there is the vowels are the, the three vowels are the fata, which is the ah mm. sound, the dama, which is the u sound, and the kasar, which is the e sound. The fata and the uh, and the dama are written above the lines. One's a dama is a curly q. The fata is just a, a slash, and then the kasar is written below the line with a slash. That you won't see anywhere on that there's script. Nothing, right? then, That's no. the Samarkand manuscript. Let's look at this one here. Here's another one. Uh, here is a example of early Razm. This is the Sana'a uh -huh. manuscript from Yemen. Can you see any dots there? Any diacritical marks? No. Yes, Can nothing. you see any vowelizations there? Nothing. What do we mean by diacritical marks? There has to be dots above. We'll get to that. Let's just look at this one here before I do anything. And the dots tell you what letter it is. Yes. Yeah. Hold on a minute. Here's another example. This is from the Topkapi, which is the probably the most famous one. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we have a copy of it right here. If you want to hold it up, Beth, let's come back here and look at this. This is the Topkapi manuscript. Just open it up so they can see it. And what you will find when you look at it, can you see any dots there? Oh, it's the same thing. No, yeah. no, no vowels, no vowel marks. There's no vowel marks. Now, there is a red dot there. See that red dot there? Yes. Here's another one there. These are added later. Oh, they're obviously added later. They're yeah, in a it's not color. even in the same ink or Often they're yeah. squeezed in. These yeah. are much, much later, and you yeah. will see there is a there is a medallion put in there. Oh yeah. Which suggests that yeah. they already had versification. Yeah. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. And that now, came much later, didn't that it? That came much That's later. Way later. So let's let's think. So here we have a script. And let me just take another picture here. Here's another one. This is a Shiite. Now, this is not a Sunni one. This is a Shiite, supposedly Ali's Quran. And you can see. Do you see any dots? Yeah, no. Do you very see any vowels? Dama, kasar, no. fatah? Okay, none Nothing. there. So let's let's now look at this graph here. There are what we have. We know that there are 28 Arabic letters. And this look up here on the screen. There you can see 28. Don't you can just take my yeah. word for it. There's the 28 there, <laughs> yeah, okay? Yeah. Now, what's the, here's the problem. When you look at those 28 letters, you need to have, there are six of them that are unique letters. Now, those yellow circles 
circle the unique letters. That means they need no dots above yeah. and below them. Every other one, that means 22 of them need to have dots. To know what letter. To know, yeah, to know what, you what could, we're saying. Yeah. Now, to understand that, let's go to, and let's just see. So let's take a look. There are the six that we're putting up there. Let's go and look at this one smiley shape. There's just a smile there, right? Mm -hmm. That's a typical letter. That's the rasm. That could be five different letters. If you put one dot above it, it becomes a na or nun. Put two dots above it, it becomes a ta. If you put three dots above it, it becomes a tha. Now, if you take that same smiley face and put one dot below it, it becomes a ba. Another dot becomes a ya. So can you see the problem? Yeah. Na, yeah. ta, tha, ba. So on its ya. own, you've no idea what it is. It could be five different yeah. letters. That's why they needed the dot. Oh, yeah. Because you could, and uh, let's, let's look at three of these smiley faces put together. Let's take three smiley faces, boop, boop, boom, and what happens when you put dots in bo above and below? You can get, in this case, 19 different words. That's, in that's incredible. Now, that's just what I have found, and those on our team at Fander yeah. have found. We know some people that can have, get as many as 33 different words but some of them are more expensive. All obscure. down to the vowelization points. It all has to do with the So and, without and the dots. those points, just yeah, the dots. without the dots. I'm not even talking about vowels now. Oh We're yeah, just, talking just about the, dots. the dots. Just the dots. So without them, you can't know exactly what's yeah. being that's said. That's the problem, yeah. and that's the reason why dots had to be formed. None of this existed in the seventh century. So all later. if, if yeah. according to Al-Buhari, he says you have to do it in the Qurayshi dialect, a dialectical difference in Arabic requires vowelization and diacritical marks, requires yeah. dottings. What in the world is he talking about? Yeah. There is no dialectic difference in a script, in a written script in the seventh century, not until these dots were invented and not until those vowels were created. So that story cannot be accurate to the period. And when was it written? Yeah, exactly. That's in the like, late ninth yes, century. Yeah. In the late ninth century, this makes all the sense in the yeah. world. So Al Buhari, when he's writing this down, thinks, yeah. ah, so this is, is why right? they yeah. had to do. Because what he's writing from next? his own time he's and reading it back. He's redacting it yeah. back. Yeah. This is a redaction. Yeah. And that's why we're saying, folks, just look at the manuscripts. You'll see the manuscripts don't have dots. This would have made no sense to anybody in the seventh century. That had yet to come. Those only get introduced in the eighth century and really only get finalized in the late ninth century when Buhari is writing. Uh, right. Does the earliest Quranic manuscript, which is the one from Yemen, the Sana'a, does that have these uh, diacritical dots? Does that have vowel, the well, sound? Or vowelizations. No, let's, I, let's yeah, have a let's look. look. That, it must have it because have we you got know. that no, one. No, we don't have the sun out. Yeah, one, we've got let's others. Go, let's look at the top copy. We already looked yeah. at the top copy. You can hold that one up and just hold that, and then I'll give this one to. Now let's look at this one here, which is the Petropolit Petropolitanus. This is the one that's in the. It's so big. Can you hold that one? <laughs> yeah, I'll hold this one. And just open it up and let's just look at one of those pages. This is the Petropolitanus manuscript, which is in oh, the yeah. Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. There we are. Okay. Okay. Look over look, here. Look. Can you see any dots in this? No, I can definitely see a script underneath, however. Ah, uh, no, that's the back side. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the back yeah. side. That's all the verso. That's why it's going the other way. If it was going the same way, then that would be a polypsis. Yes. But this is just the back side. But can you see, there? it has Addition. medallions, yeah. which means these are versification. Yeah, but that's, isn't but that's this, too late. But then, that's too right? late for that, ah, surely. That's What's why going this on? has to be an 8th century manuscript. Yeah. But, but this it still is, doesn't have the It not, still no doesn't dama, have the, the sound. Yes. And it has no dama kasra fata. Proving that in the up to the eighth century, this still did not exist. Mm. Wow! But we're talking about the mid seventh century. Yeah. So we're talking anywhere from sixty to a hundred years afterwards. You still don't have. This would not make any sense for yeah. Uthman to the say to write it in the Qureshi dialect. Yeah. Okay. There is the first problem. Well, let's look at another page, just in case someone says, "Oh, well, you just you opened just up picked one a page. good one." Right. There, yeah. Just, just go pick through any page, page yeah. after page, yeah. after no dots, no vowelization, nothing. nothing here. Can you see? There's no nothing. vowelization, no dots. Mm -hmm. There's the biggest problem right there. So you can see this is an argument for the and, ninth century. This is not an argument. It's so for the interesting century. because when it's done on this page for a modern, they, have to, they the have to put them all in. Yeah. So this they, is a if modern you edition. That, of that, yeah. a modern and, edition. Look at how different that is to that. And even this, how do you know those? Are correct. Oh, yeah. There the, could be many different ways guess. of putting it. Best guess. Maybe some context, but yeah. even we know some of the verses don't have a clear context. Yeah. Um, they We're don't always to run why from this is one verse to the next. Then we get into the Ahruf and the Kira'at. But hold on, I know yeah, you guys have to want to explain jump what that there. means. Just, just <laughs> by, if I can just make yeah. the comparison with the Bible in the sense that, like, Hebrew also has these vowel pointings and things. But what, remember, in the earlier show, we noted that 
in 300 BC, Alexander the Great had the whole of the Hebrew done into Greek, and Greek has vowels and consonants and go. all that sort of thing. So that way you can say, well, that's definitely so what it... So why didn't yeah. God continue to use yeah, Greek? Exactly, yeah. Because <laughs> Greek was available <laughs> with vowels. Yeah. Now, you keep holding that. Open okay, it up. I'll keep that one going. Now, I want you to hold this one So which one, one is this one? This is this the, is the ma'il. ma'il. This is the one in the Ooh. British Library. This is in the Par- British. Uh, this is in the na- na- Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. Right. This is the one here in B- uh, Britain. You notice only the Europeans are willing to go and actually put these into facsimiles oh, yeah. and put them out to the whole world, now, except for the top. This has a different writing now, in can that. You see, is are that there any dots here? No. Same no. thing. No, you do. Can you see? There's been a verse that's been added. Yes. Oh yeah. At a later yeah. date. What's that about? Ooh, hold yeah. on to that. Hold on to that. All right. Now just just do a few pages. So I'm just gonna. Can you see any dots there? Nope. Uh, there's no. a versification squeezed in. Verses. There's yeah, this these versification. Are not dots. These are not dots. See these that one verses. there, squeezed in. Okay, there is actually that is a that is a manuscript variant. Okay. So we're going to get into okay. those. But there the can't be variants, Jay. There aren't any variants. I know. Isn't this something you're already seeing? I'm not just <laughs> randomly opening pages here. You can see we're already coming across variants. See. So this is the ma'il. This only goes up to Surah 43. There are 114 surahs in the Quran. Yeah. This not this is not complete. That one is only about 21 percent of the Quran. So are that's the scripts not complete. the sim- similar? Like, like it looks like there might be different writers to this particular well, the, one. Yeah. Like there are five different writers to this one. Mm-hmm. This has five different authors. Different script. This writers, one has yeah. a number of different authors. But what is fascinating? Can you notice it's a slightly slanted script? Yeah. Yes, it's quite yes. different. So that's called that is yeah. known as ma'il. Ma'il means slanted. Right. It's slanted to the right. And that was a special style of writing, and that's how we can date it, and that's why we know it's so early. That's very different, that writing. That one is quite different, and this one is between the two of these. These are bo- they're both 8th century. Some, uh, I mean, uh, Martin Lynch put this to the late 8th century. Uh, Alta Kulich and Ahmed Delin, they, they put it to the early 8th century. There are some that would like to put this earlier. The problem is it's got, uh, it has... Uh, decorations that are much, much later. That's why they're not putting So it in. may be much later than that. But nonetheless, it's yeah. not Uthmanic. It's, no, no, it's no, not yeah. mid-century. And explain century. Uthmanic is the third caliph third who caliph was the one who actually who compiled, compiled that the Quran. original Quran. Yeah. Now, every Muslim, whenever they talk about these manuscripts, they talk about these are the Uthmanic manuscripts. Mm-hmm. They even mention this one here. Shall we put these here. away? I'm going to hold this one and you hold that up there. So we have three of so them right here. So this is the top cover from this Istanbul. So hold, hold that up. Right side up, and then just open up to one of the pages. It's a little bit smaller, but that's okay. So we've got three. We've got the Petropolitanus, we've got the Ma'il, and then we've got the top copy. This one is in Paris, this one is in London, that one is in Istanbul. And if you can see, none of them, except the top copy, the top copy has later vowelizations put in. That's in a different a ink. In a completely different yeah. ink. Yeah. And a compl- later, with a different nib. And that's why that's important. Now, let's. That's the first problem. Should we, do you want this what happened here? next then is, is even more devastating because then Uthman, according to Al Buhari again, chapter 6, verse 5, 0, 9, and 5. Written 10. like 240 years later. Yeah. This is what he said. Yeah, this is what he This said. is what has been given to him, yeah. so that's why he's writing this down. Remember, Uth, um, Al Buhari was given 600,000 of these sayings. And he dispenses with 98% of them, only retains 2%, whittles them down to about 7,400. About 7,400 he retains out of 600,000. So out of that 7,000, roughly 397, so 7,400, we have this reference in volume 6, 509 and 510, which is the only reference we have of how the Quran is written. All well, Muslims have to go back to that. And it's only really two sides, uh, two sides of a folio. And he says, at this time, Uthman tells Zaidi Mitabi to write it in the Qureshi dialect, and he has Alas, Uber, Zubair, and Hisham. The four of them write, do this for him. These are early, obviously, early followers or companions of Muhammad? Companions of Muhammad, but they're all helping Ibn uh, Zaidi bin Tabi, the secretary of Muhammad, to do this in 652. He then takes all the other manuscripts, according to verse 510, and burns them all. We Anything, <laughs> now let me ask you, scratch your head on this. Why would you burn a manuscript? One, if it was precious and it was handed down from yeah. God and was miraculous, you wouldn't really want to burn it. But second of all, you wouldn't burn anything that agreed with each other. You would want to get it out to yeah. the masses. So yeah. they disagreed would be the Yeah, right. they'd have to be. Because if they're all there and they're all almost the same, say, you keep them all. Because Christians keep like tons of these things. Mm. Whereas they're obviously, he's, if this story's got any truth to it at all, it, the idea then is that there's so many variants, he has to destroy them. Absolutely. To, yeah. 
you have to destroy the evidence. Yeah, destroy but the evidence. Let me ask you, if I were to say, uh, burn this Quran right now on film, what would happen to me? Uh, you wouldn't <laughs> live the I year. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't. I, I <laughs> Remember that guy, that crazy guy yeah, in Florida when he that. burned the Quran? And we went. To oh the yeah, that that's next right. Sunday, yeah. And we held up the Quran and said, "Someone give me a, fire, a cigarette lighter." And someone handed it to me. I put the flame underneath it. I said, "What will you do to me if I, I burn, burn this the, Quran right there?" Yeah. And everybody Everyone says, mad, yeah. "You will be." Yeah. And yet, it's yeah. in their history of what they did to their own Quran. Yeah, but that can't be right because yeah. they're saying that some of the earliest companions actually burned Qurans. Yes, Uthman yes, had yeah. all of them burned. Except one, which is the one that was re that was the copy of Hafsa's text. So we should find, and we should have certainly by that time period, shouldn't we? Because it was a okay, very sophisticated time period. That. We should yeah. have that copy. Well, surely than that. they preserve that. Yeah. How many preservations? How many copies did they make? Well, according to Al Buhari, again, let's go back yeah, to yeah. five. Let's just see. This is their. Listen, I have to go on what they tell us. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't believe Sent this, but I have me. to go on what they yeah, tell us. Yeah, go the story. Al Buhari says, then he sent one to every province. So, how many provinces are there? Count them as I go through them. Okay. Basra, Baghdad, Damascus, Jerusalem, Cairo, Alexandria, um, Aden, Herat, and Nishapur. Nine. Nine provinces. Right. At the time of Uthman, there were nine provinces, Beth, which means one copy was sent to every one of these nine provinces of those nine cities I have just named to you. How many of them are still under Islamic control today? Uh, Eight. Yes, most of them. Right. Only yes. Jerusalem so, would be the only so one. So they no should longer. have been able to retain yeah. complete possession. If this is God's yeah. holy word, if this is yeah. the last revelation, if this is the greatest of all revelations, as you've been trying to remind us, yeah, Muslims, yeah. And in fact, Muslims tell us this all the time. This is the one that supersedes every. This is the one that abrogates this. If this is the only reason why Muhammad was given this revelation, so that he could preserve it, if those behind him then were to take it and write it down, as yeah. it happened in Abu Bakr, and then rewrite it again, and this is now the canon. This is the canon, is what we're talking yeah. about. And every Muslim will say, this is the canonical text written by Uthman. These nine preserved, that went out. Sent yeah. out to nine provinces. So there are presumably nine absolutely perfect okay. copies. And agree, in agreement. There must be. I mean, in the last 1,400 years, yeah. in the last 1400 years has there yeah. been any flood in these cities? No, no, and they've been completely controllable Has there been any destruction no. of these cities? Not like that. Have they been ever out of Muslim control? No. no. So there's no reason to then lose these nine, right? No, they'll all be perfectly Possibly safe. Possibly Jerusalem, maybe. Possibly Jerusalem. So, okay, so at least eight. eight or or even, I'm saying six, even if there were six that are definitely good to go today. But presumably, I want just one. Presumably we can go and see all these. I want just one. Yeah. yeah I but want one of these. Are you prepared to settle for just one? I would be satisfied with just one. But I was hoping for five or six. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go for one because I know this. Even just guy. one. I would even say to the Muslims tonight, could you just provide me with one? One of the nine. Just one of the Surely nine. Surely there's one. more than that. In all these eight Muslim oh, there cities must that be more than today, that. I want just one. Well, they will point to one of these. Okay. Especially the top cup is the one that they I will have. Point to so that is one right of them. That's the one. That's the one. Oh, these are so okay. heavy. Yeah. They will point to these three right <laughs> okay, here. Okay, so there they go then. That's so no problem then. The all biggest, sorted. The, oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> okay. They will go to the top copy. That's right. Beth yeah. is correct. The top so copy is considered to be the best of them. That's Why? Because it's the most complete. Right. It's almost all sorted. That's the whole text of the Quran. Some say as much as 78% of the Quran. Some, some say as not much all as 92%. Of it. What do you mean by, why not all of it? Oh, because no. this is it. This is the definitive one from Muhammad. This is it. Sorry. No, come on. Not one of them is complete. Now, some do why? say it's in the 90%, don't they? Some Muslims some say but even it's still, Others will say it's even 90 No, but what, what's happened to 10% of it, say? Okay, hold on. No, you, this can't be right. Okay, what's the other one? Beth, what's it? Uh, someone gone. Where is that from? Uzbekistan. Okay, Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Yeah. So that's the one that was brought here to Britain right. a number of years but ago. That's and was actually put on display. quite different. So that's that's hundred percent. That one is it. That one. <laughs> Forty-three. No, that's oh, that's only forty. No. But what's happened to the rest of it then? Because this is that's the definitive huge, right? huge copies. Quran. Either they're were, inept, or they didn't. Exist. No, but surely they would preserve these things like to the last and every last bit okay, of as it. As we go through each no, one of these, I want. Yeah. Do you know the dates for these, Beth? Uh, not exactly. Okay, no. the one, the, this one here, the right. top copper, this has been dated by Altukulic and Ekmeladin Isano. They're the, now remember, nobody has really studied these yet, unlike the Bible. Like, yeah. they've been going on and on right. and on telling us how this has been deciphered, yeah. it's been disseminated, it's been attacked, yeah. it's been uh, from analyzed, chemically tested, everything. Yeah. All the variants yeah, that we everything. know where they are because yeah. we have studied it. Yeah. No one has done that to the Quran. What? Not one has done that to the Quran. But Until why? 2002. Ah. In 2002, Turkish scholars, one was named uh, uh, Altukulic, and the other one is Ekmelid Isanolu. They're both Turkish scholars. Uh, they are the ones that actually 
uh, not I won't say own it, but have responsibility for this t manuscript. Yeah. Right, so they have started to analyze it properly. Yeah. This is decided, their research, isn't this is, is it? The, not? This is their book, this actually. Is their right. So it's called the Al Musaf al Sharif, attributed to Uthman. They always right. say yeah. attributed. This is it then. Yeah. So this is a perfect copy of one of the nine. This is it. No. Oh. <laughs> Read what they say. Okay, go on. Because they've looked at this one, they've looked at the Sana, they've looked at the Petropolis, yeah. they've looked at the Samarkand, which mm -hmm. is the one in Tashkent. Mm -hmm. The Petropolis is in Paris. They've looked mm. at the Ma'il, which is the one that's in London. They've looked also at the Husseini, which is the, uh, the one that's in uh, Egypt. These, in these two Turkish scholars. These two Turkish yeah. scholars. Yeah. And, and many then more, they looked at the most recent one, which was discovered in 1975, the Sana, Sana manuscript in Yemen. So, Tell us what uh, what they say about the, this one from this the one here. They say the Istanbul one. Yeah. Right. This Istanbul one. This is the best of all of them that's preserved, but it's written at the last half of the first century A.H. and the first half of the second century A.H. Now, that means nothing to you if you don't understand what A.H. So that means after Hijra. What that's they're saying the is, calendar. it is written from yeah. 770. Yeah. The first, the first, the last second half of the uh, of the uh, century would go from 7, 7, 670 up to 720 or 721. Okay, we've got five minutes. So and second, okay, so everyone hurried up. So we're, <laughs> what they're saying is, this book was written between seven, 670 and 770. When did Muhammad died? Hang on, 632. 632. When was the Quran finalized? 650, 652. Yeah, 652. So even the earliest date is already 20 years yeah, after that. Yeah, and could be 120 years after that. It could that. be 120 years after that. Because they do say that three of the surahs come after 720 so for we, sure. So we know for a fact that that mm. is not one of these yeah. nine. That's not one of these nine. Definitely and they're, and they're very clear. It they're very and, clear. And of yeah, those this six early Qurans, Jay, this, this one is the closest, and yet and it that, still is not that Uthmanic Now, how many recension? variants did they find? Oh, 2, what? 2,200. No! Just within this book alone. Just they that found one. And that's the best one. And that's what they found. Dan Brubaker is finding Yeah, more others. than that. Dan Brubaker Dan is Dan Brubaker is a researcher He's into the, the one Quran. that wrote this book here. And, we, and we're going to introduce this in the next, not, not in this segment. We're going to introduce this book So this is on. Corrections in Early Quran Manuscripts, 20 examples. This is the first examples. thing by those by of Dr. you who Dan watch Brubaker. this can actually go buy it. It's on Amazon.com. Can, can I ask buy it. this question? This is, might sound, it might not be the right question, but has anyone tried to actually carbon date that? No, you can't. No, but even just a tiny bit you of it. You have to in. deteriorate it. The, yeah, so far, the only one that's been carbon date has been the Sana'a. Oh. The only the Because that's what I want. I want We're a We're going to tell you about okay, the, right. in the next episode. There we are. Because I immediately want... Because that happens to biblical manuscripts all the time, things yeah. like that. They'll do those tests and get, nail it down. Okay, we're going to so, get to that. Okay, so we have three minutes. So, okay, just, just so introduce some the most important and then that, we'll that's wrap most up. Important. Then the, yeah. probably the second most important would yeah. be the, uh, the Samarkand. The Samarkand is considered to be the second most important. That only goes up to chapter 43 out of 114 surahs. It has, careless to in miss fact, Alta Kulich, Tan no. Alta Kulich says, no. "Don't even use this anymore." He says it has mm. so many, it has so many uh, Varies, manuscript yeah. variants. It is written by um, Arabs who didn't even know Arabic. It That's the conclusion. That is his conclusion. Mm. He says this is a. He says it's not even worth. Uh, spending time on wow. it. I mean, it's fascinating what he says about this book. Wow. And this is the, these are yeah, both Those Muslim were scholars. the two that I certainly, 20 years ago, when I first started speaking yeah. with Muslim missionaries, those were the two manuscripts that all the Muslim, Muslim yeah. missionaries would turn to to say that's the Uthmanic Here recension. it is. Yeah. Now, I'm going to end then with the last one of the six that we should be going to, and that's the Sana'a. Because we're going to talk about the Sana'a in the next episode. Okay. Because the Sana'a is probably the most damaging. Mm -hmm. And it is the earliest. More damaging than that Samarkand one. Oh. That sounded pretty bad. Hold on to it. Okay. Wait till the next episode. Wait till what we've done about the Sana'a manuscripts. Compared to the Bible manuscripts, this is madness. We're going to get to that. <laughs> but can you see, Beth and, uh, and yeah. Paul, why this, when you make this claim, when Muslims make this claim that this is the only text that is complete, this is the only yeah. text that we can go back to origins, this is the only text that has no diagram, that has no corrections. When they put it, they put it up on such a high pedestal, yeah. it's going to be easy to destroy. We would never make that record. We've never said that about the Bible. No. We're very clear. 
uh, that we don't yeah, have the original. We're very honest we're about very it. We're very clear yeah. that there are variants. In fact, there are about yeah. 40 verses that are in doubt. Yeah, yeah. And we, we actually put it in there. I'm, yeah, we always put open up to it in the right, footnotes. Right. We yeah. put it in the footnotes. Yeah. Mark chapter 16, verse yeah. 9 to, yeah. to 20. John 8. But we don't yeah. treat the Bible like a magical book. It's no. not a magical book. No. It's, it points to the Word of God, um, yeah. to the living Word of God. Yeah. And it, it gives and breathes life. When I read the Bible, I, I read it every morning. It just yeah. lifts my soul as I read yeah. it. But with the Quran, it's almost as if it's treated like this magical magical book. It's yeah. almost like the Quran has become God. Yeah, Certainly divine. in the minds, almost yeah. divine in the way it's treated. Yet everything you're saying, there's nothing of it that's divine. In fact, it seems so man-made and it isn't even back to the earliest originals that they say they have, but also it's just no magic. There's no, there's nothing divine or godly of this book. It is yeah. so man-made it's all and it all human. disagrees with man-made. each other. Man-made. Man-made. Yeah. See, this is what Muslims don't want to hear. Oh, this yeah. is not man-made. This is inimitable, preserved, yeah, it's supposed to eternity. be. Yeah. But we're going to show, and especially in the next two segments, it is as man-made as you can get. And when man makes something, what happens? Yeah. They foul up. Yeah. We're going to see yeah. exactly how they follow. Wow. Well, thank you, Jay. Uh, this is a tough topic. I know some of you listening that this will be hard, especially uh, if you're a Muslim and you really do uh, believe and follow the Quran. This is hard and it's an emotional topic. We understand how you might have an emotional response, but it's important because if this book Quran, if this Quran is not from, um, from God, then there has to be a revelation from God. And we're saying it's the Bible. And the Bible doesn't just introduce you to the written word of God. It introduces you to the living word of God. We're going to talk more about that living word of God in an episode much later. Bless you and I hope that you will stay tuned for the next episode to carry on what we've been introducing in this one. Bye-bye.